Hello, my name is Justin Shaw, and I'm going to be talking to you about advanced perspective concepts. What we're going to be starting with is understanding how perspective changes things. I'm going to put in my horizon line, and I'm going to say I've got a two-point cube. This two-point perspective cube vanishes in both directions, but I get into some problems if I try to rotate this cube. I can change to one-point perspective, and it rotates okay and then you have to change back to two-point perspective but where do you put the points that's where the problem comes in I would explain some wrong perspective errors if you see these I've drawn these cubes and say I don't want these to line up I want them to turn and the reason I'm no longer using a line is because in the real world there's vanishing points behind you there's vanishing points in every single direction and if you draw a line across this for the horizon line as the cube turns you're going to lose where it goes and forget how to connect it and it just becomes a guessing game and everything doesn't quite sit right now if I've dropped my cube and I've picked two vanishing points and you see as I start to rotate it what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep my exact vanishing points the same distance apart so you see the distance from here to here and here to here but we're still going to come across these major errors as you start to see as the cube gets closer and closer to the edge it starts to warp more and more and you never get the cube to become correct it just falls apart and so what you have to do is two-point perspective to rotate a cube becomes impossible because it folds in half about here now I want to explain something else about perspective where the points are and what that does to them so this is a normal two-point perspective cube with the points way out here and in fact in reality these points will be so far off the screen they could be five pages off the screen in both directions to be normal and this is what happens as I start to move those pieces in and if you don't understand what's happening here at this angle this means I'm so close to the object it's like a block that's sitting right in front of me on the table and now the blocks a little bit further away from me scooted about two feet away from me now the block is getting quite a bit away from me it's about I don't know 20 feet now this is a building in the distance you can see it's stretching out quite a bit and then as I go here this building is I'm absolutely tiny and this building is huge in the distance you can see this crushing as they get closer together they stop making sense it still makes sense it just represents a larger area now this is curvilinear perspective which is the real perspective using this you can create the most natural looking perspectives in the world but you have to understand some of it instead of having two vanishing points I'm going to have four and what I'm going to do is if I draw with just two vanishing points do you see how I get this cube this cube floor it looks okay but it's it's very phony as I start going that's it what it looks like and it looks fine but it looks very computer generated But what I'm going to do is instead of just two points I'm gonna make four points and I'm going to start to warp them like a magnet where they interconnect and they get closer in the middle and further apart at the edges and then I'm going to flip this grid on its side so that I have this wave pattern and whenever I draw things like this every line connects to the points but they connect to the points in a more curved pattern and so I try to find the angles between this angle and a straight angle so I curve this one to match more of this and what I get is a far more natural structure now to do anything in 3D you have to understand how to draw the basic shapes in all the perspectives one two and three point perspective once I can draw a cube in all those perspectives then what I can do is I can draw any shape inside of them which we've talked about on an earlier video the hardest part is drawing a perfect circle because in a, lit, a circle is easy you can just draw a line and spin the line until you get it correct but whenever the problem comes in is the fact that whenever you tilt that in space you start to lose track of it I want to show you the difficulties of building a perfect circle that's the perfect circle and we're going to try to find the exact perfect line by drawing this grid through it and I've made this grid and it's magnified in I've got it one time two times three times four times five times we're still not on the circle six times seven times magnification I would have to do this X grid across this entire pattern six times to get the exact location of where the circle should be and I would have to do it a dozen ten twenty times more to be able to get an entire arc 
and then this arc and this arc and this arc. It'll take forever. I'm going to show you how to make a better circle. I'm going to start by drawing an X through it, and then a plus through that one. Once I find the center, I can just drag up and down. I'm going to go through and I'm going to connect those with a diamond. And then I'm going to do the same thing down here. You see, once I've got an X, I draw a plus line through it, and then I draw an X through that. Then I drew a plus line through that. And then I do this across the entire piece. Now, what I'm going to do is, once I've got this grid, so I know where everything's at, I'm going to draw myself the diamond. And the diamond shows us the... It's kind of like a circle. But if we divide, instead of just here and here, we divide in the middle, we can get a more closer representation of a circle. Because you see how this point and this point are halfway between these. So if I turn this off, I have to know that it's right between these two points. Well, that's a better circle, and this one's what I normally use because it's so quick. I can make a big guess about where the circle should be because I've got this, and then I just curve it. You see, it's close to the circle, but it's just, it's not perfect. I'm going to come in here and make an even better one. Got my grid, and now what I'm doing is I'm connecting to my outer points to my inner points. I'm doing that again, again, doing it again, and now what this gives me is I connect from this point to this point, to that point, to that point, and you see how I've got a pretty nice circle. It's just one step farther than this circle. See how this one still has these flats? Well, what it does is it gives it two more angles, dividing it again. And then when I connect that all the way around, you see I've got an even better circle than I did before. Now, I'm going to divide... divide. This is a different method for making a circle, which is faster and very accurate. The other one is more accurate, but this one is faster. See, I've divided this, I'm dividing this one, because I'm trying to get myself one, two, three points here, and then I'm going to connect from this point if you see, it connects through this point. So this one goes through this point, going all the way across. This line goes through this point, all the way to the corner. And this point goes through this one, all the way to the corner. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect from this point to this point, to that point, to that point. And what this gives me is this perfect arc. Do you see where the red and the green intersect? Wherever they intersect, I draw the point. And this is a very fast... you see how I didn't have to draw the grid for everything? I didn't have to draw all the grid in here. All I had to do was draw a few grids, and it gives me this perfect circle. It's exactly as the other one, but it's a faster pattern for making the same circle. I like this technique, and in fact, you just have to choose the technique that you like the best. Now what we're going to go through is we're going to explain basic cube rotation, and I'm going to show you a couple of shorthands and then get to the perfect version of it. Now, I always have my field of view, because this tells me what I'm actually looking at. And I'm going to pick four vanishing points that are equally pushed away. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to warp them to say how wide do I want this cube to be. You see, this is going to be the bottom of my cube. Then I'm going to say how tall do I want the cube to be. And you see how I have a cube in between these, and it gives me kind of a curvilinear perspective. But this it's a really a two-point perspective scene but I have to use four points to keep track of it. Now as I come through here, I'm going to divide this into fractions. Then I'm going to divide it again. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this same grid and I'm going to lay it out in perspective. You see I've laid this square out because any shape that I can draw in 2D because that's what's so important about drawing this inside the box first. Once I can draw a circle, then I divide it. These angles are going to tell me how I rotate the cube. Lay it out in perspective. And the thing is, you see this circle right here? It's inside of a box. So if I wanted to draw a box inside of this cube, it would follow the same perspective lines that go this way. That's how I laid this circle out. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, I want my box to be that tall. 
I'm gonna have to redraw it. Now that I know what the box, what it looks like as a circle. There we are. Once I've laid this piece out correctly, I'm gonna go through here and I'm going to do the same method I did before. I'm connecting to my vanishing points, but I'm warping it, because this how, is how wide I want my cube to be. And this is how thick. Now I'm going to do is I say I want it to be this tall, and then I connect those points across so I can keep track of it. And connect those across. That's how tall it is. I connect these across with curvilinear lines. Connect those across, and that gives me my last one. This cube can now be rotated, and I can keep track of all the faces. Gives me that cube, and that cube can be rotated by moving these angles. I'm just going to move it one. And if I look at this, do you see how I'm rotating that cube? If I keep moving this and rotating it around, and I stay on my exact perfect angles, they're a 15 degree angle, keeps everything pretty straight, and it makes this cube very easy to rotate. But there's an even better form of cube rotation. This is what a full grid looks like, and it's just a grid divided a great deal. You usually do not need to go this far, but it's the idea of what this type of grid looks like. I go in, I've got my grid, I'm dividing it out, and now I've separated it into 45 degree angles. Then I'm going to separate each one of those into 15 degrees. And 15 degrees again. If you see this, 15, 30, 35, or 45, 60, 75, 90. And then I'm going to, do you see how this circle perfectly fits inside this square? I just did the circle equation again. Once I've got that, what I do is I animate a square on top of it. Because this gives me all my rotational axes. You'll see that, you see if I draw a diamond, how it connects to exactly the same angles. And if I rotate that, you see how I can rotate a square from this perfectly every single time. Makes a pretty pattern. Now that I know how to draw this and I know how to rotate a key, a square, to make this 3D, all I have to do is draw it in perspective. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna push that into perspective. Then I'm going to animate my square in perspective. Do you see how I still can rotate it by connecting those points? What I'm going to do is, now I have to say how tall do I want to make that cube. And then I move this, and I draw, if you see it goes to the exact same vanishing point. Vanishing point? Do you see how they both go to the same vanishing point, but this one is taller up? That's how tall I want my cube to be. But I drew the same grid going off into the distance. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to draw the square animating across it, rotating at the exact same angles. And what this gives me is the ability to 100% know exactly how this cube should move. Do you see if I draw a cube between angle 1? Then if I turn on my square that I've drawn number 2, you see it connects to number 2. And if you follow this logic, 1, 2, 3, hopefully you can see that the cube rotates perfectly in perspective. And you ask yourself, why on earth would I need to know this stuff? Well, most of the time people guess on cube rotations and things like that. But at some point, somebody's going to say, this doesn't look good, can you make it perfect? This is how you come to these solutions. You have to know exactly what to do to make these things come into perspective properly. And once you know that, because doing things in one-point perspective works, but knowing exactly how to do them, to make perfect rotations of this cube. And I could just divide this circular object into more uh, angles to give myself a more accurate cube rotation. And now for the very last part, calculating shadows. Once I've drawn cubes, I'm going to place shapes inside of them. And I need to figure out how to calculate where their shadow is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick a point on the floor where I want the light, and then I'm going to draw it up to where I want the light to be. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect the angles 
from the top of this, I'm drawing a line through this point all the way down. And then I'm going to do the same thing to this point to all the points on the ground. I'm going to connect it through this point, the top line through this point, and as you go through this point, you're going to start noticing that if I connect those lines, what I get is this area will be the shadow perfectly projected from this. So from this point, shade in all of this, all of this, and all of this. And that gives me a perfect cube shadow. Now I'm going to go to the cylinder where it gets a little more complicated. What I have to do is from the bottom point across to the other side, then from the top, and then I've got to do something unique. I've got to subdivide the top. I'm going to subdivide it again to make it more accurate. And you see each one of these points where I've divided this. What I have to do is I have to connect them from the top to each one of those points. And I'm going to do the same thing to the base. But do you see how from the base I connect, I draw out until it connects to the points. Do you see how I get this perfect angle? And this is lazy. If I would have added more points, it wouldn't be so sharp. But this gives me the perfect angle to know where the shadow should be drawn in here. The cone is even easier. I figure out the outside edge from the bottom. Then what I do is I figure out a point directly in the center. Kind of like the cylinder. Connect from the top down. Wherever it connects, I draw lines to the edges. And now I have my cone. Now the sphere gets a little more complicated because I have to draw a ring around it so that I can know exactly where these points are. And the more of these points, the better. What I'm going to do is I'm going to connect each point down. See, I started in the middle and drew this line through it. That gives me a ground plane. And I've got a vanishing point where all these shapes vanish to. And what I'm going to do is connect this point through each one of these. And I can take this point. They can go on forever, all the way down here. But this angle tells me where the ground is. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect each one of those See this point where it intersects? I'm going to connect it to here. And what it does is it gives me this circular shape projected on the ground. Understanding these techniques, most people won't use them. They'll just go, I can guess where the shadow should be. But someday you'll get hired, hopefully, if you work hard enough and study the techniques to do things perfectly. And these are the techniques to do things perfectly. Hopefully you'll use these techniques, study them, and know them as a fact. Most people don't care about perspective. But drawing basic objects is what you should be doing before you draw people. Hope this has helped you a lot. Thank you.